Hello everyone, welcome back to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. This video is another sampling example, and specifically we're going to focus on sampling signals that consist of sums of sinusoids. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to consider sampling a signal, um, x of t, that has this spectrum shown here. So the first job that we have perhaps is to figure out, well, what is the signal, the time signal x of t look like? Well, this is um, a simple sinusoidal spectrum, so we can easily um, write out what the signal is equal to. So we can write an equation for x of t, and it's going to consist of the sum of five components. So x of t will equal 1 e to the minus j 2 pi 20 t plus 3 halves e to the minus j 2 pi 10 t plus 2 plus 3 halves e to the j 2 pi 10 t plus um, 1 e to the j 2 e to the j 2 pi 20 t. Okay, so we can clearly add up uh, these complex exponentials and convert them back into cosines. Um, so these two here convert into cosine 2 pi 20 t, and these two here convert into cosine uh, 2 pi 10 t. So we write that back out. Here's the constant, it's 2 plus, um, it'll be 2 times 3 halves, so plus 3 cosine 2 pi 10 t plus uh, 2 times the 1, 2 cosine 2 pi 20 t. Um, now, you may have been able to easily just jump right from the spectrum to here, and that's fine. I just wanted to write it out with the complex exponential terms so that if you don't immediately see this step, you know how to do it. Okay, so this is the signal that we have. Um, 2 plus 3 cosine 2 pi 10 t plus 2 cosine 2 pi 20 t. And the question I have is if we sample with a rate of fs, the sample frequency equal 35 hertz, will there be aliasing? So what do we check when we look to see if there's aliasing? Well, we check what's the maximum frequency. The maximum frequency of this signal is 20 hertz. Nyqu the sampling theorem, the Nyquist sampling theorem, says we have to sample twice as high more than twice as high as the highest frequency. So that, in this case, would say we'd have to sample at 40 hertz. This is less than 40 hertz. So yes, we expect aliasing. Yes, there will be aliasing because Fs, which is 35, is less than 2F max. 2F max is 2 times 20 or 40. Okay, so we expect aliasing in this case. Okay, so the problem that we have um, that I've set for you here is to say take this signal x of t, run it through a sampling process at a rate of 35 hertz. So fs equals 35 hertz for this whole problem. Run it through the sampling, sketch the spectrum of the samples x of n, write an equation for x of n, and then run it through the reconstruction, the d to c conversion, and sketch the spectrum of the reconstructed signal xr of t, and write an equation for xr of t. So that's what you're supposed to do with this problem. Um, so now I challenge you to turn off the video for a, sec for a few minutes, however long it takes you to, um, to do all this, um, and then just turn it back on when you have your solution so that we can compare. Okay, I hope you paused the video and are ready to compare answers now. So let's take a look. All right, when we do sampling, what um, the easiest way to think about the sampling process is to think about um, taking the spectrum that we start with and making um, copies of it at integer multiples of the sampling frequency. So we take this original spectrum and we make copies of it every fs. 
Um, so what I've, I've sketched those copies here. The original, the copy at 0 times fs, is drawn in black. Um, and that's just the same thing we started off with. Um, I drew the copy up at fs, which is 35 hertz, in blue. And I drew the copy at minus fs, or minus 35 hertz, in red. And so we can see where all these components of the copies end up. Um, now we can, um, so we see that basically we're going to end up with a, a periodically replicated spectrum. We often go ahead and normalize the frequency axis going from here to here, and we define f hat, which is the normalized frequency axis, which is f divided by fs. So it's f divided by 35 in this case. So if we do that, and I've just redrawn the whole spectrum down here um, with those normalized frequencies now, uh, and I haven't bothered to draw them in different colors. Um, and so you know, the component at 10 hertz, 10 divided by 35 is 2 sevenths. The component at 20 hertz um, uh, is 20 divided by 35, which is 4 sevenths. This component here is showing up, just so you have, have a record of this. Um, this component here is showing up, oops, sorry, I want to actually draw that, um, is showing up at 15, right? Because it is the copy that's 20 hertz to the left of um, the center. Okay, so the center's at 35, 20 hertz to the left of the center is at 15. Okay, um, and so that shows up, if we go down here, that shows up at 3 sevenths, 15 divided by 35. And all of these are just um, moving it down and normalizing the spectrum. So this is what we get. Now I'm going to redraw this on the next page so that um, you can see what we're doing. Okay, so the final normalized spectrum that we end up with is this. This is just a copy of what I got on the previous page. And um, what you can remember is that um, this is, you know, sort of the unique part of this spectrum lives between uh, minus a half and plus a half. That is equivalent on the non-normalized scale to minus fs over 2 to plus fs over 2. Outside of this region, it just repeats. Okay, so if we wanted to draw the whole thing, we just draw copies of this outside this region. Okay. Um, now we can easily, from this, figure out what the time signal is, x of n, that corresponds to this signal. And we know it's going to consist of a sum of a bunch of cosines. Um, and um, the frequencies of the cosines we can just read right off here. Okay, um, So we know we have a zero frequency component. That's the 2. That shows up here. Then we have a cosine, at plus an, which means these lines, at plus and minus 2 sevenths. So that'll be cosine 2 pi 2 sevenths n. Right? The 2 pi is to convert it to radians. And it's a... It's an amplitude of 3 because these amplitudes are 1.5, which is basically half the amplitude of the cosine. And then um, we have one more component, and that's at plus and minus 3 sevenths. So we get 2 cosine 2 pi 3 sevenths n. So that's our equation for x of n. And we basically just read that right off the spectra. So we look at all the components that lie between minus a half and plus a half, and we write an equation for them. Now, if we're going to reconstruct this signal, all that happens in the reconstruction is we pick off one copy of the signal, okay, and we rescale the frequency axis, um, and we get the spectrum of xr of t is that one copy, and again, we rescale the axis, so now what was at 0 is still at 0, what was at 2 sevenths is now at 2 sevenths times 35, etc. And so this is the spectrum of the reconstructed signal. We can summarize this on the following page. So what we get here is, here is the spectrum of the reconstructed signal. Okay, um, now I've just multiplied out those things. So I have a component at plus and minus 15, plus and minus 10, and at 0. So xr of t, I can just read off this spectrum and write it out. It's 2 plus 3 cosine 2 pi 10 t plus 2 cosine 2 pi 15 t which, if we look back to what the original x of t was, 
It's not equal to that. Okay. We notice, oh, hmm, the first two components are equal, but the last component is not. And that's because the last component was aliased. The other components weren't aliased because we sampled high enough for them. A sample frequency of 35 hertz um, is high enough um, to sample a 10 hertz sine wave without aliasing. And it's certainly high enough to sample a constant without aliasing. But it wasn't a high enough sample frequency to sample the last component, which was at 20 hertz, without aliasing. So the question we have down here is, well, how fast would we have had to sample to avoid aliasing? And we had that answer from the first page. We would have had to sample at um, fs greater than 40 hertz. If we had sampled fs greater than 40 hertz, then let's take a look back at our original sketch. If we had sampled greater than 40 hertz, then this copy here would have moved to the right. So this, um, let me make my pointer a different color here. Um, if we had sampled with FS greater than 40 hertz, this whole copy would have moved out here, and this would have moved outside, and we would have exactly represented the original signal. But because we didn't, we sampled at a lower rate, um, we got aliasing. So this is the final answer that you have um, for this problem. So this is what xr of t is equal to. Hopefully that's what you got in your own work. And that concludes this brief sampling example. So um, again, this sampling example was made for the ECE 201 course at Mason um, during fall 2014. And if you want more information about our programs, you can go to these websites. Thanks for watching.